All right, here we are, chapter 21, homework number nine, problem four. This is problem four out of the back of the chapter as well, 21, about angular momentum and rotational motion. Here we have a, a satellite moving around the Earth in a circular orbit, and the kind of satellite that's being referred to in this problem is geosynchronous satellite. That means that the orbital period of this is 24 hours. So go ahead and convert this over however many times you need to do that until you get it into seconds because we need to have everything in meters, kilograms, and seconds through these kinds of problems. Now, a geosynchronous satellite is useful because the satellite is always above a fixed position on the Earth. As the Earth rotates, this rotates at the same rate. That's why I wrote 24 hours there. It's useful because if you have a dish, such as an 18-inch dish that's used for television, the dish can remain in a fixed position, pointing at a fixed position in the sky, and not have to track the, the satellite across the sky in order to receive uh, television signals. If you get the period, um, then you can figure out what the frequency is of rotation of that thing. That's 1 over P. And of course, if you know the frequency, then you can find out what the rotational velocity is of that satellite. That's 2 pi f. And remember that what you're doing here with the 2 pi is 2 pi radians per revolution times the frequency, which will be in revolutions per second. I imagine this will be a fairly small number just based on the fact that this will be a big number right there. All right, so what we're trying to do is figure out what the orbital radius is. So if we do a free body diagram and just isolate the satellite right here, then the only force that we see acting on it is the force of gravity, F sub g. So we need to really take the Earth out when we're doing this Newton's second uh, law equation for this satellite. We're focusing only on the satellite. The only force here is the force of gravity. I have it to the left right there, F g. So I'm going to put a minus sign for that since it's to the left in my particular diagram. And also the um, acceleration that we have here you would think that if it's moving at a constant speed in a circular orbit that there's no acceleration, but there is what we call centripetal acceleration. So we put A sub C for that right there. And uh, centripetal means center seeking, and the center of this uh, satellite's orbit is in the center of the Earth. That's to the left, so we'll also have a minus sign right there. All right, I need a little room to work the rest of this. So what I need to do is write down what the force of gravity is between two masses. Now that turns out to be, in the case of F sub G right there, I got the minus sign, capital G, which is a universal gravitational constant, times the mass of the Earth, that's the big M right here. We'll put a little m for the mass of the satellite right there, and little m for the mass of the satellite divided by R square. So this is called um, the inverse square law of gravity, universal gravitational constant, mass of the Earth, mass of the satellite, distance between their centers of mass, centers of masses from there to the center of the satellite. So the shape of the satellite doesn't really matter for this uh, approximation that we're doing here. All right, that's equal to minus m, where m is the mass of the object that we did in our free body. It turns out to be a lowercase m because it's the mass of the satellite. And then centrip centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. That's one way of writing it anyway. Um, here V is the velocity of the satellite as it moves around in the orbit, say in meters per second. But uh, you know what? Centripetal acceleration can be written as V squared over R, but because there's this connection between tangential velocity and angular velocity, you could write V is equal to um, omega R like that. And so another way to write centripetal acceleration is omega squared R because you put the omega, um, the omega r right here, you get omega squared, one of the r's cancel out, and you get this. So that's another way of writing that. Now why did I go and do that? Well, because we have just found out what the angular velocity is in um, radians per second, because remember these revs right here will cancel out, and you'll get it in radians per second. So I'm going to erase this and write the other form of centripetal acceleration, and that's omega squared r. At that point, we see the minus signs go away, and also we see that um, the m's go away. So the mass of the satellite doesn't matter when we're talking about putting it up in an orbit 
a radius r such that it remains in a fixed position around the Earth. It looks like to me that what you can do here is just pull the r's to this side of the equation, pull the omega over uh, the omega square over to this side, and basically solve for r. And when you do this, um, what you're going to find out is I believe it's going to come out in meters, and you want to check the uh, problem for and see if they want that in meters or miles or what have you. Convert it over to the proper units. So the rest is this. Is, the rest of this is really algebra. If you look at the word problem, they give you the mass of the uh, Earth. And also on the homework link, I give you the constant, the universal gravitational constant. And you'll be surprised that this satellite is many, many miles uh, from the center of the Earth in which it orbits. All right, I hope that helps get you started.